What is up guys, Coach Joe here at Barbend, which is located in Brooklyn, New York, with my man, Jake. What's going on guys, my name is Jake Boley. I am the fitness editor here at barbend.com. I've been here for a little over three years now. Uh, my background, I have a CSCS, I have a master's in sports science, bachelor's in exercise science, and yeah man, today we're gonna be building out some content on landmine. Yeah, so as you guys know and have been following me, documenting the journey of me getting into the sport of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm just trying to find some different training modalities to implement in my programming. And he had this awesome idea. I've actually never covered the landmine press on my channel before. He's all about it. So he's going to take us through basically uh, how to set it up. We're going to go through a push pull leg and uh, some core rotational work, giving you guys five kick ass exercises to just be a lean mean strike machine, right dude? Let's do it. All right, so one of the issues that people run into with landmine exercises is finding the best way to set it up. So if you're not in a great gym that already has the implement, you don't wanna jam the barbell into a corner, especially if that's a concrete corner and chip up the barbell in the corner because I guarantee you, there are gonna be people coming after you if you do that. So there are a couple different ways you can set it up. One way is just having the barbell down and putting a plate over it, but one way that I prefer is actually using two dumbbells and granted this only works if they are rubber capped, using them as a caddy corner. So taking two dumbbells, positioning them as so. So basically what we're gonna do is try to create like a made up corner right here, right? So that's where we're gonna put the barbell. So when we go to set up, that barbell is gonna fit into here. And now it's not gonna be a perfect fit every time, but trying to create that diagonal angle with the dumbbells will generally keep that barbell pretty safe. So again, this works for rubber cap dumbbells. If you don't have those readily available, we'll show you a quick optional way to set it up really fast. All right, so the first movement we are gonna break down is the landmine press and a couple different variations for Joey to try and why he would do some of those variations. So for the first variation we're gonna cover is a traditional landmine press where Joey is gonna be standing. So we'll bring Joey over here to the landmine itself, flip that barbell up. Joey will take that in one hand. He's gonna to wanna to square himself up with the landmine itself. And you're gonna press through Joey as if similar to overhead press, bringing that bicep to the ear. One thing to keep in mind is to not lean back and press out. It's gonna have a little bit of a forward lean to it. You're not gonna be so forward leaning where you're pushing this way. So it's gonna be a slight lean. Bring this up and think bicep to ear. All right, so as you can see, Joey is tall. And for most athletes, I say over like six feet, even 5'10", I have him go from the knees or a single kneeling position or half kneeling position for that matter for the landmine press, just because when you're so tall and you have to press that barbell, you're limited to a more forward angle as opposed to getting that bicep closer to the ear and really engaging that delt. So what I'll have Joey do if I was coaching him and in a personal training setting, I would have him go from his knees. So let's go ahead and get to one knee. One knee or two. Let's go two knees to start. Cool, and now can you press through? A Little bit of a forward lean there. Glutes are engaged, core is nice and neutral, and he's bringing that bicep to the ear and the press, come back down. So as you can see here, press again. That's a lot more in line with getting that bicep to the ear as opposed to pressing out as we were before, just because he is a little bit tall. So something with the landmine press, if you are erring on the taller height of let's say 5'10 and over, you might wanna go from a kneeling position. So now let's say we wanna add a little bit of a variation of creating a little bit more core stability while doing this pressing variation. I would have Joey come into a half kneeling, so let's go with the off leg first up and then press through. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna require the glutes to stay engaged. He's gonna wanna keep this leg in without having that torque out. If you are turning out, then you may wanna realign your hips, realign how you're positioning the core and bracing. But when going half kneeling position, try to just keep consistent with the leg you're going. So if you're going opposing, keep that consistent throughout. So when you switch, you'll obviously switch. And then you can just kind of structure it as you want. One big thing to keep in mind is that you can press from the same side. So let's switch the knees around. Press. But just keeping that consistent throughout. So doing equal reps on each side with the way you're positioning the barbell and the half kneeling position. All right, so the next landmine variation we're gonna do is the landmine row. And the reason I like to program this, especially for beginners, if you have a landmine available, is because in that rowing motion, especially with like a unilateral implement, like a dumbbell, you'll see a lot of beginners pull that elbow up. The landmine forces you to almost keep like that lawnmower starting fashion of the row. So it almost teaches you how to sequence and contract the lat properly versus pulling that elbow out and thinking that's how you complete the row. So what I'm gonna have Joey do is set on the bar as if he's gonna be performing more of a traditional like bent over dumbbell row. So he'll set on the bar, Joey. 
And for this, you're gonna position yourself at a height, depending on if you're using plates or not. We're obviously gonna grab the collar just because there are no plates here, but you'd be a little bit lower if there were plates on or at the top, depending on how big the plates were and what we're actually using. So from here, Joey, I want you to think about doing what would you would call a traditional like dumbbell row. Okay. So from here, you can see that he's pulling that elbow back, creating that almost like starting that lawnmower fashion, really engaging the lat. At the bottom, he's thinking about keeping that nice, strong, neutral torso. His hips are set, his posterior chain is tight, he has a soft bend in the knee, similar to how you would in a more bent over dumbbell row, as if he had two dumbbells pulling at the same time. Awesome. Do you uh, allow people to put their hand on their quad or do you like a, a hand away? So generally hand away because I think even if you're just resting there, it's like putting your hands on your knees and leg press, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you might not be pushing through, but you also might be biasing it, especially yeah. if you don't have enough awareness yet. So generally I'll have the arm just hanging. If you want to have it here bent, you can do that. Whatever's going to allow you to keep that more neutral torso without dipping one way or really dipping mm -hmm. in this way, however you want to position yourself, if you want to put your hand here, you can, but just be very, very, very mindful of not resting into it or biasing your movement by putting any weight into that left arm. And then what do you think is one of the biggest mistakes people make with the row variation? So with this row variation, I think a lot of folks can stand too upright or even too low. And what that kind of does then, row now, not that this is inherently wrong, but I think it's a lot more it's different. Yeah, sure. it's a lot more difficult to really sequence that lat to row back. You put a lot more stress up here in the shoulder. And again, not that this variation is wrong, but if you're really trying to engage that lat, I think there are better ways to do this efficiently. All right, so the next movement variation and kind of lift we're going to talk about is the landmine squat. In this movement, we're going to talk about three different variations. There are a ton of different ways to perform this, but in this video, we're going to cover three. So the first movement is going to be more of your traditional landmine squat, like more of a goblet squat. And what we're going to have Joey do before he picks up the barbell, bring your toes up a little bit more. You want to think about putting like your big toes length overlap with the edge of the barbell. Generally, that's gonna put you in a good position when you're fully at depth with the landmine movement. Now, however, if you do have longer femurs, shorter femurs, you might have to play around with it. But generally, having a big toe length over the collar length is gonna put you in a good position. So I'll have Joey go ahead and pick up the barbell, get into a traditional more goblet squat position, so have that bar nice and tight. And what you'll see here, compared to your normal goblet squat, is there's gonna be a little bit of a forward lean. So let's go ahead and sit to the bottom. Perfect, now from here, Joey's gonna keep his feet planted and he's gonna think about driving upwards, but not directly upwards. Think about putting a little bit of emphasis into the balls of the feet, but not bringing the heels up. And you don't wanna jam it so far forward that you're shooting the bar forward. So drive to the balls of your feet. Awesome, do you feel like quad engagement? Yeah. So one thing that I love Landmine Press for, and this is for folks I think who have underserved quads like myself, is that it naturally puts you in that more forward position. So at the bottom, you really gotta focus on driving through the quads. This is similar to if you like put a heel elevated like goblet squat with your more traditional or kettlebell. Just that forward connotation puts a little bit more stress on the quads, gives you a little bit more of a pump, and you can really focus on targeting them. All right, so the next variation we're gonna cover is a single arm overhead squat. So let's go ahead and put the barbell in your right arm. Bring that up to your bicep to ear. Good, now sit into the squat as you normally would. Good, drive through. Good, and what this is gonna do is it's basically just gonna have you, one, keep that kind of forward momentum, improve a little bit on your lockout strength. Now obviously it's not gonna be like a true lockout as if you're overhead pressing, but adding that slight upward motion here is gonna require the core to stabilize a little bit more. And if there isn't any discrepancy, so go down and sit at the bottom. Let's say you depress here where you find that barbell coming out, you might wanna realign how you're moving and that could be a good indicator of any imbalance that you might have. So if this is coming out, that's a good indicator that you're not being tight enough with your overhead position, or if you're really leaning into one side, so let's say you lean over to the side to compensate, that might be a good indicator that your pelvis isn't very stable and you're not being able to maintain any force that's throwing you away from your equilibrium. So go ahead and stand back up. Beautiful. All right, the final landmine squat variation is gonna be the split squat. And nailing this comes down to your overall setup. And again, there might be some discrepancies based on how you're built. We're not all built like Joey, unfortunately. But to have him get into position, I'm gonna ask Joey to kind of keep in mind with his split squat position and how he normally positions. And I want him to think about putting that barbell in the middle of what his normal stance would be. So go ahead and get into position. So he's about like a, I would say a 
foot in between his feet. So he's gonna put that barbell in between and then he's gonna bring that front foot up to the point to where the edge of the barbell is in line with his heel. And now from here, Joey's gonna go ahead and put that into a goblet squat position and then go into a split squat, beautiful, and come up. And I want him to think about really driving through the quad and kind of that ball of the foot at the bottom, similar to how we did the other squat variations. And something to keep in mind here is there's gonna be a little bit of a forward lean naturally. So don't load the bar to a point where it's too heavy to go to the bottom. Shoot your hips back and then come up. We wanna think about putting, and this is a cue from Pat Davidson, is the hips are going up in an elevator, not an escalator. So come back down, come back up. Those hips go straight up and down. He's thinking about putting the focus on the quad, driving the ball of the foot, keeping that foot flat. One more time. Come back up. Beautiful. All right, so we have two more exercises and they're both rotational exercises, AKA a very underserved movement pattern in my opinion. For this one, we're gonna be doing just a more traditional landmine rotation. So we're gonna have Joey go ahead and pick up that barbell in a standing position. His feet are gonna be about hip to shoulder width apart. He's gonna have a slight forward lean to the barbell itself. And he's gonna have that elbow crease, thinking about like at a little bit bigger than a 90 degree focus. So bring him down just a little bit more. Boom, right, right there, perfect. So you don't wanna have this too tight in. We also don't wanna be fully extended. So 100 degree elbow flexion is usually a pretty good bet. So now from here, Joey's gonna think about dropping that barbell to one side, similar to if he's doing like a Russian twist on the ground. So go ahead and drop to one side, good. Bring it back up. So what he's gonna be thinking about, as opposed to just mindlessly turning, is the obliques are gonna be controlling this movement. It's not a movement to where you're dropping your shoulder and bringing it up. So you're coming down, letting the oblique do the loading. Good, bring it up, good. And if you're doing this correctly, you're almost gonna feel that opposing oblique like almost stretching. And then when you're bringing it up, similar to how you do a bicep curl, you're gonna feel that nice contraction. So go again, bring it up, good. He's gonna think about really loading the obliques, turning and going. Now when it comes to breathing with this exercise, as opposed to bracing to your fullest extent, like in a deadlift or a squat, you're gonna breathe as you normally would through movements. You're obviously not gonna be so lax to where you're losing your positioning, but you don't wanna be so tight to where you're almost limiting that movement pattern because then you're not gonna get the full stretch on the obliques that we're trying to target. So let's go one more time. Drop to the side, bring it up, boom. Go again, boom. And a useful cue to think about when using this is like, think about, being in control of like if you had to whip the barbell. Power is control. Don't obviously get reckless to where you're throwing yourself out of position, but you wanna think as if you're trying to really get that barbell like out of stuck mud while being controlled. All right, so the final rotational exercise we're gonna do is gonna be definitely more complex in nature. And if you haven't really got the sequencing down of like, let's say an upright row and a press, definitely focus on those before implementing this in. But if you feel like you're ready, Definitely give these a try. They're a dynamic movement. They're gonna integrate a lot of different muscles and they're gonna be great for your proprioception. So to have Joey get set, we're gonna think about putting this inside foot in line with the edge of the collar. He's gonna take that more like hip width, shoulder width stance. He's a little bit wider, so he's about shoulder width. He's gonna bend down and pick up the barbell right about in the middle of the collar here. And so what he's gonna do is then get to like a nice soft knee bend here. So now from this position, Joey is gonna to bro this up as if he's doing an upright row. And as soon as that barbell gets to like that lower pec range, you're then gonna do a handoff with this arm. So handoff, good. And then he's gonna think about driving through the arm, pressing that bicep to the ear, and he's gonna rotate the feet with the barbell. He doesn't wanna keep the feet obviously facing forward. He wants to go with that bar. Come back down to your starting position. Boom, hands it back up. Let's go slow-mo really fast to show everybody what this kind of looks like in action. So upright row, mid chest, grabs, press, rotates the core. And basically, similar to the barbell rotation we just did, or the landmine rotation we just did, he's gonna think about loading the obliques here, upright row, upright row, hand off, finish, driving through that bicep to the ear, and really thinking about keeping that core engaged, using that oblique to really drive through the press and rotate the feet. One thing to note is that there's never a point when he's not making contact with the barbell. So go again, slow motion, it's a handoff and he's finishing it. He's not floating the barbell up and grabbing it. It's all sequential, it's all making contact the whole time. And when you come back down, go one more time. Something to note is that, come back down to your normal position, watch the feet here, they're gonna rotate with the barbell as well. So 
the feet are going to rotate with the barbell going up, and they're going to rotate the same way coming back down to that starting position. All right, so first off, thank you, Jake, for giving me the rundown of some exercises that I can do with the landmine. Uh, I'm curious, I'm sure the viewers are curious, sets and rep-wise, what are we thinking for these exercises? Also, the benefits or why we would use a landmine. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so generally, for landmine movements, I'll put them more as like a first or second accessory after a main compound movement. Why is that? Just because you can't load them as heavy. So obviously if your goal, for example, if you're doing landmine presses is to press more weight, you can only load that to a certain degree. And obviously that's never gonna replace as much weight that a regular overhead press can do. So doing these as a first accessory is a great way to get extra volume, but also they're a little bit more joint friendly. So if you do have AC joint problems like myself, they're really great for focusing on just getting in that hypertrophy and volume work without overdoing it and then beating yourself up for your next session, which could actually impede your progress. So when it comes to sets and reps, it's gonna come down to your overall goals, but generally like three to four sets, working between that like six to 12 rep range, depending on how you're loading the movement, how your preceding movement was loaded and the movements after. So if you have a ton of volume, you might not wanna load them crazy heavy. Obviously scale your sets and weight based on what you're doing in the program and based on your goals. All right, so when it comes to the benefits of doing the rotational movements that we went over, obviously the final movement, so that row to press is very dynamic in nature. It really teaches you a lot of proprioception with moving through a space and time and rotating with the just general landmine rotation. It teaches you a lot about loading up those obliques and trying to produce force in a controlled manner. So again, just focusing on the obliques more and how the body rotates, I think is a very underserved niche in the world of strength and conditioning and i think we can all use a little bit more rotation but those are my big benefits with those we can obviously list off hundreds of benefits but those are my favorite oh yeah so just want to say thanks for uh, jake running me through some landmine variations i know for me personally uh obviously just by doing this i'm hooked on doing more of them and obviously for the sport of brazilian jiu-jitsu we're using all of the planes of motion in that sport so uh, utilizing these exercises is only going to help benefit my game when it comes to that, uh, and even in strength sports, but I think everybody should give these a try. So I just wanna say thanks to my man, Jake. Uh, Jake, where can we find you, dude? So find me at barbin.com. I am Jake Bully there. You could also follow the Barbin page at Barbin. If you wanna follow my personal coaching page and kind of my personal, which might not be that interesting for many people, but it's at Jake underscore Bully, B-O-L-Y on Instagram. Put everything down below, but until then guys, they leave me strength machine. Catch you later. Peace.